Wellness Health Coaching. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome back if you are not new here. Welcome, welcome if it's your first time. If it is your first time, I would love it if you would leave me a comment and just introduce yourself. Let me know why you're here and what kind of videos you're looking for. Um, but I'm happy that you're here. I am a functional medicine health coach and I mostly do videos about recipes, teaching you how to cook really good food that is healthy. We mainly are paleo in my house, which is grain-free, dairy-free, legume-free, refined sugar and inflammatory oil-free. Um, though we do occasionally have some dairy, like I'm going to put some dairy in my recipe tonight, but it's very easy to leave it out, so I'll tell you how to do that. Um, I occasionally do some fun things like Walmart clothing hauls or a Stitch Fix you know, clothing, subscription, review, that kind of thing. Um, sometimes I sit at my desk and talk to you about functional medicine things like how to uh, follow an anti-inflammatory diet and how to reduce your stress and that kind of stuff. But usually I'm right here, this is my kitchen, and I'm cooking dinner for my family. So tonight we are making Philly cheesesteak in a bowl. So instead of doing the whole bun, we're just doing the meat and the veggies and everything in a bowl. Um, and I'll show you what I'm serving this with once I get it all together at the end. But this is a, um, it can be paleo, like I said, it is naturally grain free. Um, it can be also dairy free. I'm going to use a little bit of butter. I could use ghee, but I just prefer butter and we're fine with butter now. Um, for a long, 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 long time, we didn't do any dairy. So that may be where you are. And if that's where you are, you can use ghee or just more oil, um, avocado oil, coconut oil, um, those would be my top two choices for this particular recipe. Um, and then I'm going to put a little cheese on top, which again, you can totally leave out. There's so much flavor in this recipe. You do not need the cheese. And so my family was sick last week. And just now, as I'm talking to you, I'm feeling like out of breath and kind of tired and kind of hot. So <laughs> talking to basically myself on the camera, I know you're watching later, but right now you're not here. I'm by myself doesn't make me nervous or anything. So it's not nerves that I'm feeling like this. I think it's just one of those weird random post virus symptoms. So I may have to stop and catch my breath. I got a new burner. My old little burner quit on me. And so I just bought a single burner this time and we're trying it out for the first time. I hope it works well. It's the same brand. I can link it down below. Um, I have my biggest cast iron skillet on and I'm going to put a tablespoon of avocado oil in. And I'm going to start um, slicing my vegetables and stop talking so much. I'm going to put in two big green bell peppers and one big sweet onion. Onions are on the dirty dozen, so buy organic if you can. I'll tell you what, right now, it's January 2022, and um, these are kind of crazy in the stores, aren't they? It's... It's kind of hit or miss what you're going to find and what the prices are going to be. I have been a meal planner for a super long time. Like I plan my meals for, I used to just do a week at a time. And then when all the stuff happened in the past couple of years, I started planning two weeks at a time, sometimes three weeks at a time because I just didn't want to go shopping as often. So like I said, this is a new burner to me. So I'm kind of having to learn it. My old one wasn't super hot. Um, so I had to have it pretty high. This one I think is going to be a little hotter. Um, say a little prayer for me, please, that the smoke alarm does not go off. Um, but I feel I'm still planning. But sometimes I get to the store and they don't have what I needed on my list for the recipes that I have planned. So I'm having to be a lot more flexible with my cooking. Um, let me know if you're finding the same thing where you are. We actually, where we where I live, we don't get a lot of wintry weather. And we just had two weeks, weeks in a row where we got some ice, sleet, snow. And because we don't get a lot of that, people kind of go crazy. Um, and I went to the grocery store yesterday, which is a Sunday, which is not normal for me. Uh, but I needed some things for the week. And Aldi, one of my favorite stores. Hold on. Let 
They had like no produce. They had mushrooms, which I didn't really need. It's like three packages of mushrooms. They had a couple really sad packages of um, zucchini. There was one bag of apples, one bag of oranges. It was crazy. I'm guessing their truck had just not made it to them. I don't think that was a pandemic related supply chain thing. I think that was just the weather affecting the area. But I thought, wow, well, you know, this is what I'm hearing about from other parts of the country, even other parts of my own state, kind of the shelves being there. So I hope that things are, are good where you are, that you're finding groceries. Anywho, all I have to say, planning is great. I'm a big fan of planning your meals. That's really about the only way to follow this kind of healthy lifestyle diet. But you got to be flexible, too. Like last week, I can't remember what the situation was. But, yeah, I don't remember what happened. Something I had thawed out was not thawed or something. And I'm just going to sprinkle in a little salt. This is an eighth of a teaspoon <laughs> and a little black pepper. Um, but I have like three things planned and I couldn't end up making any of them. So I had a couple fresh vegetables. I don't even know what. Mushrooms, zucchini, pepper, carrots or something random. And a pound of sausage. So I cooked those, the, the sausage with the vegetables, and a package of gluten-free mac and cheese. I cooked that separately just like you would normally cook boxed mac and cheese. And then I mixed it all together. I think I put it in a hot sauce. Everybody loved it. It was really good, but it was not what I had planned and not what I would normally serve. But, you know, I got a hearty, somewhat nutritious meal on the table. So... I put in the peppers, I put in the onions, a little salt and pepper. Um, I'm going to cook that for a few minutes, and then I'm going to add these mushrooms. It's just eight ounces of cremini or baby bella mushrooms. Whatever you have is totally fine. Seriously, most recipes, baking is different, but just cooking recipes, you can substitute like crazy. So I'm calling for cremini mushrooms. It's what I like the best for flavor. I'm going to write it for what's best in, in my mind. Um, but absolutely, you could use any mushrooms you wanted, or you could leave them out altogether. It's really fine. Um, but mushrooms are a great way to kind of bulk up your recipe um, inexpensively. Adding a vegetable, mushrooms have a ton of great vitamins and minerals. They're actually really, really good for you. For a long time, people talked about mushrooms like they were kind of a nothing food, but no, they're not. They're um, they're very nutritious. So. Add in your mushrooms. We eat them a lot, actually. Which I'll tell you my funny mushroom story. At least I think it's funny while I'm waiting. I hated mushrooms growing up. Or at least I thought them. I hated them. I'm not sure if my parents made me taste them, but I, I didn't eat them often enough to actually legitimately say I hated them, but I was a mushroom hater. Well, fast forward to college, and haha, there's a boy that I had a crush on and we were actually really good friends but I kind of had a crush on him and we were eating at this pizza place um, on campus and I mean just like a typical young girl he's like I don't care what do you want to do I don't care what do you like it was that kind of thing and he's like what do you want on your pizza like oh I don't care whatever you like and he's like I love mushrooms I really just love like a pizza with extra mushrooms <laughs> so I was like oh yeah that sounds great I love mushrooms too um, and so the pizza comes with mushrooms, and I ate it, and I loved it, and it was great. And um, lo and behold, I didn't hate mushrooms, but it took me kind of being a, a wimp, I guess, and afraid to express my true thoughts to realize, oh, wait, I actually do like mushrooms. Um, okay, just a little bit hot. I'm going to turn it down. Oh, my old one, I had to put it on, like, high, the very highest level burner for it to get any kind of really sustained heat. And this one, I have it on one. It goes up to, well, seven, and then it says max. So levels one to eight, and I have it on one. And it's it's really hot. Um, so I want these to wilt a little bit. Let me just kind of walk you through the recipe, and then I'll go through the rest of it kind of fast. Um, my recipe says to cook these for about 10 minutes. 
however you like them. If you like them super crunchy, don't cook them quite as long. If you like them really, really soft. Um, like some people need their vegetables cooked more to aid in their digestion. Vegetables are plants and they're hard to digest. Um, so you cook them longer, just kind of, if I say 10 minutes, that's roughly 10 minutes. And then you want to add the mushrooms, roughly 10 minutes more. This is my steak. I've already sliced it. I'll show it to you in just a second. Um, we're going to take all the veggies out, put them on this plate so I can have space in my skillet. I'm going to add this little bit of butter, which again is where you could use the coconut oil, more avocado oil, whatever. Um, cook your meat real fast, a little salt and pepper. And then you add your seasonings, which we have Worcestershire sauce. We'll talk about this in a second. Um, I have Frank's Red Hot, and I have Coconut Aminos, um, a little more salt and pepper. So a lot of people would say, oh, the Worcestershire sauce and the hot sauce, not paleo, can't have those. So again, paleo is, I guess it means different things to different people. Um, when it first came out, maybe 20 years ago, as like the paleo diet, it was this ancestral health, we're going to just eat off the land, it's nose to tail, that kind of thing. Um, but I think it kind of morphed into this, let's make it grain free, let's make it dairy free, let's make it this anti-inflammatory diet. So, you know, the Paleolithic ancestors would have um, not had processed dairy. They had animals that produced milk, they would have consumed their milk for sure. They wouldn't have had Worcestershire sauce out of a bottle. They wouldn't have had hot sauce out of a bottle. They wouldn't have had coconut aminos. So none of these things would have been truly paleo. But paleo today is anti-inflammatory and it has these rough guidelines with the grain-free, dairy-free, etc. So coconut aminos is this wonderful soy sauce alternative. So we're not doing soy because that's a legume. And legumes are very inflammatory to a lot of people. So this one's from Thrive Market. I'll link Thrive down below. I've talked about it a ton, so I don't need to talk about it here. Um, but this is where mine comes from. It's certified organic coconut, blossom, nectar, water, and salt. So this is a really pure ingredient that has great flavor. Um, it's the base of all my Asian stir-fry sauces, that sort of thing. But also, I learned from America's Test, test Kitchen years ago, um, a way to add just like that little extra something to your recipe Soy sauce or lemon juice or both. Those were like kind of the just kind of kick it up a notch ingredients. So this is not an Asian dish, but this coconut aminos, one tablespoon, it's going to add a lot of flavor. Okay, we're going to add a couple dashes of hot sauce and we're going to add a tablespoon of Worcestershire. here. This hot sauce, this is Frank's, this is the Costco size bottle. Um, Frank's, I really like the flavor of it. It's my favorite hot sauce, so it's the one that I like. But also, its ingredients are red cayenne peppers, sorry, aged cayenne red peppers, still vinegar, water, salt, and garlic powder. There's no natural flavors, there's no artificial flavors, there's no spices. It tells me there are four things in this, and it tastes great, so we eat that one no problem. Worcestershire sauce. Liam Herons is the one that I have found that tastes really good. It is gluten-free. Some of them are not gluten-free, and it has pretty pure ingredients. Distilled white vinegar, molasses, sugar, water, salt, onions, anchovies, garlic, cloves, tamarind extract, natural flavorings, chili pepper extract. So, natural flavors. It's not natural. That's not a great thing. Um, but it is better than other brands, and it has that really unique flavor. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to turn my oven on because it has some things I need to put in here. Okay, let me put these mushrooms in and I'll talk to you about the meat. Just sprinkle in a little bit more salt. So these ingredients, all three of them, are salty. And so kind of go easy on your salt until you have those ingredients in and you can taste for seasoning. This thing is really hot on the outside. These little tabletop burners are great for if you're renovating your kitchen, um, if you need an extra burner at holiday time, if you like to make cooking videos on YouTube, they really come in handy. We loaned our old one to some friends when they were renovating their kitchen. I know it was a godsend to them, especially 
that little mm -hmm. one was um, was a double burner. Okay, so let me tell you about this meat. My recipe calls for top round steak or tri-tip or other cut recommended by your butcher. I'm going to scroll over and see what it says. Sliced very thin. Okay, so I buy most of my um, good meat like this steak at Whole Foods because they just have the best selection of good quality meat in my area. I used to do butcher box. I had a very bad experience with butcher box. Honestly, you can see I did videos about that. Um, I think I'll try them again someday just for the convenience and see if they have gotten their act together. It was like a packaging and, and shipping issue. I apologize if my lighting was bad. I realized I moved that light to get into the fridge and never moved it back. Um, so anyway, Whole Foods. Uh, I just got tired of going into Whole Foods all the time, and I thought, you know, I'm going to be one of those people who orders their groceries online and picks them up. Let me try it. I did it once at the very beginning of the pandemic from another regular grocery store. It was a disaster. I didn't get half the stuff I wanted. It was just, it was a disaster, and I said, I'm never doing this again. I don't mind grocery shopping. I'm going to, I'm going to go to the store. But in November, I don't know what happened. I was busy, whatever, and I thought, you know, I pay for Amazon Prime. Let me try it, because we have a Whole Foods real close. Like I said, I don't mind grocery shopping. Let me just try their order thing and see how it works. Well, it actually worked great, and I've done it maybe six or seven times since then, and I've had one bad experience. And it was the day before we had an ice storm, so they were super busy. Um, but it was a bad experience. I won't go into why. I actually got the groceries I wanted. It was like a customer service issue. Um, but here's the downside of that. You can't walk up to the meat counter and just like say, mm -hmm. what do you recommend? Or what looks good today? And right now, they're, you know, stores are out of random things. So choices are, are sometimes limited. Um, and I have found that when I order my Whole Foods groceries online, I know they have things in the store that they're not showing me as available online. I don't know why that is. Like, I can order this. I buy this uncured pepperoni from the deli section for when we have homemade pizza. I can order that online, but I can't get the deli turkey, which I know they have. So, I don't know why there's some of that discrepancy. So, I went to order my top round or tri-tip for this recipe. They didn't have either of those. So I had to look at what they had available, and what they had available was ribeye, which I did some research, and a lot of recipes, like real true Philly cheesesteak recipes, recommend using ribeye. So I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to get it. It's like $18 a pound, but the tri-tip was $15 um, the last time I bought it in the store, so it wasn't that much more expensive. So anyway, so I have ribeye, so I hope this is super, super good. So the problem with the ribeye was that it had a lot of fat. Um, so I actually cut the fat off. I trimmed this and I sliced it already. Um, I cut that fat off and I put it in the freezer and I thought, maybe I'll do something with this, like render it down for the for the tallow, like you would render down pork fat for lard. Um, I'm gonna experiment with that. But So this was, I asked for a pound and a half and I actually got way more than that. And it made me mad. I thought, they, they cut me to order. Why could they not cut me a pound and a half? For $18 a pound or $20 a pound, whatever it was, I, I really didn't want two pounds. I, I wanted a pound and a half. So I complained about that. Um, and they did refund my, my money, which I appreciate it. They didn't need to do that, but, um, but they did. Anyway, so you want to cut your meat against the grain. So you look at it. And you see that the lines are going one way. Like say your steak, but it's muscle fibers, right? The muscle fibers are all lined up like this. You didn't want to slice it like that. So you end up with these shorter fibers and it's going to be more tender. It's going to be easier to eat. So, so I have, it's kind of weird. Some pieces are this size and some pieces are teeny tiny. Some pieces are longer. But you want to cut it as thin as you safely can with your nice sharp knife. I did sharpen my knife before I started. Um, and slice it against the grain. So, I think that's about it. I feel like I need to apologize for being super chatty. But I know some of you love that. 
and some of you really just want the recipe. And um, I tend to be more chatty because I'm cooking in real time. I'm not doing one of those like social media videos that you see where they do a whole recipe in a minute. I'm doing a real recipe with thorough instructions that I hope will help you know how to make this well for your family. If you were not talking as much as I'm talking, you could do this way faster um, than what I'm doing. Um, one more thing, I have said it in a couple of my past videos, but just in case you didn't see those, um, I have a lot of old videos on YouTube under the name Our Paleo Family. And then I changed my name to Functional Medicine Living because Paleo was like, people were not wanting Paleo for whatever reason. Uh, it kind of got a bad name, so I took that away. And um, so now my channel on YouTube is called Functional Medicine Living because that's what I'm talking to you about. How do we live this functional medicine lifestyle? But you can find these recipes that I'm sharing with you now going forward are on my health coaching website, totalwellnesshealthcoaching.com. I'll link that for you down below. Maybe my video editor will even put it across the screen so you can see it. Um, but all of my newer recipes and blog posts, I have something come out every single week on my website. It's either some kind of tips for functional medicine living or it's a recipe, exercise helps, that kind of thing. So every week there's a new post on Mondays on, um, on that website. But that's where you'll find these recipes in printable form like they used to be on my old blog. Kind of making the business website a blog as well. So um, because when clients come to me for health coaching, a big part of what we do is we talk about food. We're talking about how to manage our stress, that kind of thing. And I have all these resources that I'm providing to them. So I'm just putting it now there all in one place. So all the coaching resources, all the recipes, all the information about hiring me as a health coach, it's all there in one place. It's making my life easier, and I hope it's making everyone else's life easier too. Okay, we're done with this. We're gonna put these veggies. I hurt my shoulder, so I can't lift up my arm like normal. I know this looks weird. Back on the skillet, we don't have to um, we don't have to clean that out or anything. We really want all that flavor in there. I know some people are super against oil. We don't use a ton of oil. Um, I don't think just a little bit's gonna cause Alzheimer's, but um, you know, if you'd rather put parchment or plastic wrap. To keep that warm or not even worry about keeping it warm fine with me you do what you want to do all right so i'm going to melt these this is two tablespoons of grass-fed butter i've got carry gold but any real grass-fed butter is fine and now i'm going to put in my meat i really want it to sear so I want my skillet hot, which it is. I want as thin of a layer as possible, but I'm not going to lay each little piece of meat out and flip each piece individually. No, no, no. That is way too fussy. Way too fussy. I'm not doing that. But you can do it if you want to. I'm not telling you not to. I'm just saying I'm not going to. Because it's not necessary. It's going to taste the same in the end. We do need a little salt on this. It's neat. It takes a lot of salt. We need a little pepper. Okay, this is what I say in my recipe. This one I can hear about. Add the butter to the skillet. No need to clean it. Okay. Um, lay the meat on the paper. It came wrapped in. Sprinkle salt. Oh, so I was telling you to sprinkle salt and pepper like on your butcher paper. It doesn't matter. It's in the skillet. Now add the meat to your hot pan. Don't stir. Really, don't stir. Let the meat sit and cook for one and a half to two minutes. Then flip it to the other side. And it takes kind of a maximum of four to five minutes. And then we're going to stir our spices in. We're going to put our veggies back in. We're going to taste it for seasoning. We're going to put our cheese on top. And we're going to broil. So I'm not touching it. Okay, and we want 
five to six slices of provolone and two ounces of cheddar. The cheddar just has a really nice, rich flavor, especially if you use um, a good grass-fed sharp cheddar, which is what I have here. This one is from Costco. I'm getting a little hoarse. So two ounces. If you have a kitchen scale, that's actually great. A kitchen scale is a really useful kitchen tool. But if you think about um, those standard blocks of cheese they sell at the grocery store, those rectangular blocks of cheese, those are eight ounces typically. So cut a quarter of that, that's two ounces. <clears throat> Sorry. So this is probably closer to four ounces, but it's okay. All right, that's been plenty of time. I want you to see this piece. Can you see that color on there? That is going to have so much flavor. I did turn my burner up to three. All right, because we have this super high-end meat, and I don't want to overcook it. I'm going to go ahead and add my seasonings in. So you notice I really am not measuring for the most part a tablespoon of Worcestershire, a few shakes of the hot sauce. My kids like hot things more now than they used to, so I probably use a little bit more. And then just a tablespoon of coconut aminos. So good, so good. All right, because of this Philly cheesesteak, I have to taste the steak part separately from the vegetable part. Mm -hmm. Good, 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 good. That was well seasoned. Let me taste an onion and a mushroom. Hmm. It needs a little salt. So I'm just mixing these together. pretty that is. Okay, I'm going to put the cheddar on first. Again, you can totally leave this out. Listen, when my kids were, um, were babies, I was nursing, they were both allergic to dairy, cow's milk. And so I, if I ate dairy, it made them bleed from their digestive tract. So it was um, no good. I did not cheat on that one teeny bit. I was super, super, super careful about it. And I learned in that year that you can eat anything. Well, it was two years, two kids. Um, you can eat anything without dairy. It's really fine. Pizza without dairy, the, the toppings totally make up for it. Philly cheesesteak without dairy, totally don't need the cheese anything. You do not need it. You can live without it. You might love it. You might miss it. You might be sad, but you don't have to have it. Um, coffee, you buy a really good quality coffee. You find one that you love the taste of. If you're not putting all that cream and stuff in it, you can actually taste the nuance in the coffee, like in wine. Um, you find a coffee that you really love, you'll enjoy drinking it black. You don't have to have dairy. But dairy is delicious and we love it and we can eat some of it. So we are going to have a little bit of cheese on top of our Philly cheesesteak in a bowl. So this is going in the oven under the broiler for just a few minutes until it melts and is bubbly. And then I'll show you the whole thing put together. Okay, and this is it. Um, I hope you can see how yummy this looks. Just about 
two minutes under the broiler on high. We have these yummy veggies, meat, delicious sauce. Um, this is really what I would consider a complete meal because you have vegetables and you have meat and you don't need a carb. So we are pretty low carb in this house most of the time. Um, I had a lot of potatoes left over from Christmas when I couldn't find individual organic potatoes, but they had whole bags. And so I had a whole bag of Yukon Golds and a whole bag of Russets and I totally forgot about them um, since Christmas. And so they were really going and I needed to do something with them and didn't want to throw away in this crazy day of um, high grocery prices. So we have a huge pot of mashed potatoes, which will actually be delicious with this. It's just not kind of normally what I would pair together. Um, call this a keto recipe, Trim Healthy Mama, S meal, which we don't even talk about at all, but we can talk about that in another video if you want to talk about Trim Healthy Mama. That's when I was kind of following Trim Healthy Mama when I created this recipe years ago. Um, so the potatoes would not go with this being keto, but you could do a cauliflower mash, which I have a great recipe and video for that. Um, and we have some broccoli just because extra veggies are always good. Um, and it seems like with our leftovers, we eat more of the we eat more of the vegetables at the main meal, and we don't have as many veggies to go with leftovers, so I just wanted to cook an extra vegetable. Anyway, this could be your whole meal, or you could add extra stuff to it. Certainly there's yummy sauce in here that will be super good on the potatoes or rice, cauliflower, whatever. But let's taste. It's so good. It's so simple, but it has so much flavor. It's kind of special since we have ribeye but you could very easily use ground beef. In fact, we'll totally have this with ground beef 99% of the time. Um, whatever inexpensive cut of meat you can find, but you don't want the cuts that are tough, that you have to braise for a long time, like a pot roast type cut. You don't want that because it will be tough. You want a tender cut of meat, which is gonna be a more expensive cut of meat, unless you do ground beef, which is why we would probably do ground beef with this most of the time my oven coming back on because my broccoli isn't quite done. I need to put that back in. Um, so anyway, Philly cheese steak in a bowl is delicious. It's easy. Everybody loves it. It can fit perfectly in your paleo anti-inflammatory diet and you don't have to make some different special diet food. This is delicious. Everybody, your big meat eating husband will be thrilled to have this and including your teenagers. And we're eating this on a night when our teenagers are working so they don't get any. Just kidding, they can have leftovers. Um, but we will eat as much as we want before they get home. That's for sure. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this, everybody. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. Uh, sometimes you get unsubscribed when you don't want to, so check in, just hit that subscribe button, just in case. Like, share, all that stuff, help our channel to grow. I'd really love to hit 10,000 this year. Um, and we can do that if you will subscribe and share. And that helps to tell people that you know that good food can be good for you and I'll bring you lots more recipes like this one. Okay, have a great day everybody and I will see you next time.